and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening to all of you. My dear friends, uh, late Dr. Lalit Kotelawala belonged to this parish in Mary State Bambalapitiya some years ago. I have been informed that he used to worship in this parish or in this church. Like many Sri Lankans, I am aware of his tremendous humanitarian work he carried out during his lifetime. When some employees of his former bank approached me to conduct a memorial service to celebrate his, the life of Dr. Yalit Kotelavla, I readily agreed. Coming together as God's people to commemorate and to reenact the mystery of Christ's love, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God <clears throat> have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, who have strengthened us by the mystery of the cross and promise us a share in the mystery of your Son's resurrection, mercifully grant, we pray, that your departed servant, Lalit, may be gathered into the company of your chosen ones. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch him. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be an evil thing. And they are going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of men they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like sacrificial whole burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the struggle. They will govern nations and rule over the peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand the truth, and the faithful will abide him in his love because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones. The word of the Lord. You, 
the response of real psalm your response the lord is my shepherd there is nothing i shall want the lord is my shepherd there is nothing i shall want fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose near restful waters he leads me he revives my soul he guides me along the right path for the sake of his name your response the lord is my shepherd there is nothing i shall want though i should walk in the valley of the shadow of death no evil would fear would i fear for you are with me your crook and your staff will give me comfort your response you have prepared a table for me in the sight of my foes my head you have anointed with oil my cup is overflowing your response surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life in the lord's own house shall i dwell for length of days unending your response please rise for the gospel acclamation Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have revealed to the little children the mysteries of thy kingdom. Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they are." is the kingdom of heaven blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who mourn, who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you. and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven the gospel of the lord please be seated
my brothers and sisters, I'm sure all of us are very particular about our own health, don't we? We are particular about the food we take and our daily exercises and the rest we need to take on a daily basis, at least for a few hours. We are very particular about our lifestyle and we want to be healthy all the time. If you are in good health, then there is nothing to worry. If you are not in good health, there are two things to worry. Whether you will go to heaven or whether you will go to hell. If you go to heaven, there is nothing to worry. But if you go to hell, we are told, you will have no time to worry because there will be a long queue of people to shake hands with you. That means that there are a lot of people in hell. I'm sure all of us want to go, we want to go to heaven, don't we? Going to heaven is to meet Jesus. Going to heaven is to meet the Lord. I'm sure Dr. Late Dr. Lalit Patalavala did his level best to please the Lord. The humanitarian services that he rendered, we all are aware of it. We are people on a pilgrimage. And today we hear of a lot of deaths, a lot of youngsters dying. Just uh, in the month of August, we had an anniversary mass in this church. And all those who celebrated their wedding anniversary in the month of August came for the 1030 mass. And after the anniversary mass, we usually have a fellowship. So I used to invite the couples to come for the anniversary mass for a short fellowship. And I spoke to all the couples. And then uh, a week later, I was told that one of the couples, the husband, when he went for a mercantile tournament, badminton tournament, while he played, he collapsed. He was rushed into the hospital. And he just passed away. Age 29, first wedding anniversary. The first wedding anniversary of this couple. The husband passed away at the age of 29. That is why, my dear friends, I said that Death comes like a thief. People die due to various reasons. National disasters, accidents, sicknesses, COVID-19 caused over 5 million deaths. So we need to prepare for death. Our spiritual preparation is what matters. I remember having a session for the youth and I just told them, supposing you have only six hours to live, supposing you have only six hours to live, what would you do? If the world is going to end in six hours, what would you do? So there were some who answered, some said, I will go home, call all my family members together and spend those six hours with the family. Another said, I will think of those who have gone against me or those who are not in good terms with me. I will reconcile with them. I will reconcile with them. Another said, I will go to the bank where I have deposited my money, withdraw my money, 
and share the money with, with those in need. And then another said jokingly, I will eat and drink and make merry. I will eat and drink and make merry because I only six hours to live. Now if I ask the same question from you, what would you do? You have only six hours to live. Some of you would say this, yes, Father, what you said. Some of the things we will also agree. We'll spend more time with the family. Some would say. Some others would say, we will share our wealth, our money we have with the needy, the downtrodden, the marginalized. And some would say, well, I will try to reconcile with those who have gone against me. Now, if these are important things for you, because you have six hours to live, because the world is going to end, your focus is going to be on the four areas, important areas of life, family bonds, family ties, sharing what you have with the needy, forgiving those who have gone against you. Now, if they are important for you, as the most important thing, things because you are left with six hours. The question I would like to pose is, if you have six years, won't those areas be important? If you have more years, won't those four areas be important to you? Just as it has importance to you when you have only six hours. Yes, what is important in six hours is also important when you have more time. But the reality is not that. The reality is not that. When you know that you have more years to live, you think that you have more years to live, you consider those four important areas as less important. We don't worry about family ties. We are not worried about family bonds. We are not worried about forgiving people who have gone against us. We are not concerned about sharing what we have with others. I said many will not do all what I just mentioned. Family bond, family ties, sharing, forgiving, because you are more tired. But what is important, my dear friends, whenever you go for a funeral mass of this nature, you need to be very realistic about life. What happened to some of these youngsters who died recently? You know, some of your friends, this a boy, 29-year-old boy, was after his first wedding anniversary. He just passed away. So we need to do what is important all the time. I'm sure late Dr. Dalit Kotalavala gave his, he gave more importance to the Lord. I know that he was focused on the Lord. The Lord was his anchor, the Lord was his shield, the Lord was his stronghold, the Lord was his Alpha and Omega, the beginning and end. The Lord was everything for him. He had faith in the Lord and also that he also showed the faith by his deeds, helping the poor, the downtrodden, the needy. So my dear friends, uh, we thank the Lord for the gift of life he gave to our dear friend, Dr. late Dr. Lalit Katalawala. He rendered human service in his own capacity. As we all have, he also had pluses and minuses. We ask the good Lord to welcome him into his heavenly home. The Lord says, there are many rooms in my father's house. And we request the Lord to just provide one room to our dear brother, Lalit. Eternal rest grant to Lalit, O Lord, and a perpetual light shine upon him, and may he rest in peace. Amen. Please rise for the prayers of the faithful.
your response lord in your mercy hear our prayer lord in our mercy hear our prayer for the whole church that we prepare worthily for the hour of our death when god will call us by name to pass from this world to the next we pray to the lord lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray in thanksgiving for all the blessings that came to so many people through the life of your child Lali. May he now receive the fullness of God's blessings in eternity, where there is neither sorrow nor pain. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Lali, that they feel the healing power of Christ in the midst of their pain and grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are gathered here today, Father, your child Lali touched all our lives in different ways. Help us to keep alive the values and ideals he put before us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, protect the healthy, calm the frightened, give courage to those in pain, strengthen those who care for the sick, Console the bereaved, comfort the dying, and give the dead eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God our Father, please accept these our prayers and petitions through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the offertory.
holy, holy, holy Lord, God of all. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is you who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Catholics may kneel and this may sit. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the new form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was over, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that your wealth is worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Malcolm Ranjit our Bishop, the order of bishops, the auxiliary bishops, the laity, and the clergy. Remember your son and servant, Lalit, whom you have called from this life to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
As the Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray, let us together say the same prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, free us from sin and save us from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. God our Father, help us to experience the same peace in our own families, in our own country, in the Middle East, in Ukraine, in South Sudan, and in all parts of the world. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Catholics may need on this visit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus, who cured the sick, gave sight to the blind, converted the sinners, performed many miracles. Happy are we who have been called to his supper. Lord, I am unworthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand for the final prayer. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the soul of your servant, Dalit, for whom we have offered this sacrifice to your majesty, may by the power of this sacrament be cleansed of all sins and receive from your mercy the happiness of perpetual light. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Firstly, on behalf of all former employees of Sri Lanka present here and all those who are watching the live stream from overseas, I am very grateful to Father Trevor Martin, the parish priest of St. Mary's Church, Bambalapitiya, for agreeing to celebrate this memorial mass in this beautiful church for our dear late chairman, Deshmania Desh Bandhu, late Dr. Lalit Kotalabha. A few years ago, this was the parish of our dear chairman. I would also like to thank Mrs. Kotalavala and the family of Mr. Kotalavala for gracing this occasion and accepting our invitation. I will try my best to fondly acknowledge a bit of the colourful life story and the impact our dear chairman made on many of us who serve this unique Ceylon Bank. Suffice to say that Dr. Lal Kutalavala was a colossus of our time, admired by many and with a vision that only a few businessmen could have possessed. I will read the first paragraph that I wrote in the appreciation that was published on his birthday last Sunday in the newspapers, 29th October 2023. I quote, Ceylon Bank, the bank with a heart. A phrase every Sri Lankan is familiar with, coined by the late Deshmania Deshabandhu, Dr. Jeevaka Lalit Bhupendra Kotalavna is perhaps the simplest and yet most profound indicator of the unparalleled vision and single-minded determination of this undisputed icon of our times. When the seemingly impossible slogan was proposed by our founder chairman, just after the inception of the bank, the handful involved within the establishment were aghast and not many believed that it would take root. And yet he persevered. The slogan took wings and established itself as an endearing and simple but powerful message of what the brand stood for, just he had believed and predicted. Such was his conviction. Such was his faith in the brand that was to be developed. Unquote. I would like to share something what our late chairman shared with a few of us in those early days of 1988 regarding this seemingly impossible tagline. He explained why it was necessary. I will recreate the gist of a story related in his own words. After setting an appointment, he had gone to meet a managing director of a reputed big bank to obtain funding for a new venture for the Selinko Group. Throughout the interview, he was kept standing and given a long lecture, and in the end he was told as to how the project would be a disaster. The funding was declined. 
undeterred by the bad experience. The determination that he had got the better of the situation and he started the Blue Diamonds operation which was a pioneering, pioneering venture in Sri Lanka. He quoted this experience as a lesson to many of us in the years that followed. Our late chairman had a clear vision as regards the type of bank he wanted. Before Ceylon Bank was open, we were told in no uncertain terms that every customer, no matter what the person looked like or the attire worn, should be treated with utmost care and concern, and we simply complied. It was his vision that made Ceylon to be established as the best in offering customer services from the beginning in 1988. We did not have social media in those days to obtain votes of people to measure how good we were, but it was a caring and friendly approach that made it possible for our customers to feel our genuineness in their hearts. To emphasize the vision of our dear chairman, I recollect something unparalleled in banking during that era. This is just one of those things I would like to recall. He wanted us to introduce high chairs outside the counters for customers to be seated while attending to their banking needs. This was one of the first and surprises never seemed to end in those early days. I can go on and on, but let's keep that for another time and another occasion. I thank you for your patience and will end some excerpts from the last two paragraphs that I wrote in the appreciation that was published. I quote, this appreciation is penned to place on record our gratitude for his vision and generosity and our profound sorrow on behalf of a few thousand employees who benefited from his magnanimity. We thank our late chairman from the depths of our hearts for the pioneering vision he had to create a unique bank which could hardly be compared with any similar organization. May fond memory, I beg your pardon, may fond memories of him remain in the hearts of all those who knew and appreciate his truth. His, I'm sorry, I'm mixing up, I'm getting emotional, sorry. May fond memories of him remain in the hearts of all those who knew and appreciated his true worth. A friend to many, a man whose life story serves us to remind that a single human being does have the power to create lasting positive change in the world. May his gentle soul rest in peace. Farewell, dear sir, you will be sadly missed. Before I could conclude, I wish to thank a few handful of people who helped me to get this organized in such a short time and everyone who contributed towards these expenses within a span of three to four days. You exceeded all expectations, which explains the love and regard for our late chairman who was so near and dear to our hearts. On behalf of all pioneers, retirees, and excellent staff, I remain. Thank you. Let us now stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is over. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>